This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride. I'm James Beastie. I'm married with children, but deeply committed to an open relationship with snowboard gear. And this is the Nitro Dropout. I got this in some pretty decent late spring conditions, but still late spring conditions. Rode this with the Burton Kendo and the Union Atlas. To give you a short summary, this is an all-mountain board disguised as a free ride board. It looks very tapered, very directional, but it's actually not. It's just directional, it has no taper, and it has much more of an all-mountain feel than you would think looking at the shape. And I would call this an all-mountain board. It is not like the Quiver Fusion you see next to it that is a true free ride, tapered, directional kind of ride. What I found with this model, it was a little bucky, a little bouncy in some uneven terrain, but very poppy, very lively, very energetic, a fun, technical, mostly camber kind of ride that want it to be just a little less unforgiving than full on camber. And it just does a little bit of everything well, has a cool shape to it, and does nothing great though, but that's all you really want out of an all mountain board. It just never shits the bed across the board and never really shines in one particular situation though either. When it comes to sizing, I felt like this 56 was the right size for me. It felt like the right size for my boots. However, the weight didn't feel great. My 190 to 195 pounds felt like a little bit too much for this board. So I think this appeals to a lighter rider. The shape of this is directional, but the tip and tail are the same width. That means it doesn't feel washy on the tail on a turn like tapered directional boards do, like the Quiver Fusion next to it. You need a little more back foot weight to get the board to finish the turn without the tail washing out. It's not a bad or a good thing, what I just described. It's just what tapered boards do and you get used to it. But if you don't like that tapered feel, then you're really gonna like this dropout. Now, when it comes to the camber profile, it's mostly camber. There's just a little bit of early rise in the tip and tail. And that makes for a advanced expert kind of rider kind of board. It's not easy to skid a turn, but it tracks really well, one foots really well. It's the kind of board that feels consistent in all conditions. Just if you want a little more technical board and you want that reward from that pop and, and the drive and that easy tracking, then this could work for you. Now let's talk flex here. I was a little surprised at how soft it was. It said it was a seven out of 10 and the nose is pretty soft. The tail's a little stiffer, but about the same. But there's just so much bend in the middle and it really doesn't have the stiffness that I thought it would. This Quiver Fusion is a seven out of 10 and you can see it just doesn't have much give at all. Now, when it comes to speed, this had the most chatter of the three that I tried. It just didn't hold its speed well in comparison to the Quiver Fury and the Highlander next to it for sure. It just felt like it started to chatter more and just didn't really want to point it. Just liked slow to moderate speed and that was about it. And the base glide was fine. Nothing amazing, nothing horrible, and just kind of like upper middle. The uneven terrain on this board was less than ideal for me and my weight. If you're a much lighter rider, I think you're gonna be just fine with this. But if you weigh 190 to 195 like I did when I was riding this, right when I wake up after a steamy piss, then this might be a little too much for you. It bucked and bounced me around in messy spring conditions and got me off my line a lot more than almost any other board I tried in those conditions. In terms of edge hold, I felt it was pretty competent, good in the hard patches I hit, but definitely not an ice specialist or a hard snow specialist. But on the positive side, it did not grab at all in that softer snow. So if you like a board without a disrupted side cut, but you still want competent edge hold, this could work. When it came to turn initiation, 
It was like medium fast edge to edge. And once you got past initiating the turn, it felt like the side cut when it was engaged just really wanted to kind of turn hard left, hard right. It kind of liked a circle carve a little more than that down the line kind of high speed, long drawn out S turn kind of turn. And it still did fine with just kind of like, you know, chill medium radius to wide radius turns, but it really shined when you really wanted to carve with it and really lay into that side cut and that camber profile, really get that to engage and spring out of it. Another place I had a really fun time with this where I didn't really so much with the other two boards was in the wiggle. I think the side cut worked really well for just those quick kind of, you know, kind of hard wiggly turns going through that grooved snow all the way down. This did pretty well there. If it just wasn't as bucky and bouncy, it would have been amazing. But overall, I think the turning experience was really cool with this. And I personally like a more turny board than a straight liney board. So this had good appeal for me here. Now, when it comes to powder, I didn't get any of these boards in powder. The camber profile that's mostly camber isn't gonna be the floatiest in comparison to a lot of hybrid camber shapes out there or hybrid rocker shapes that have more early rise. But with this set back on board, this'll do a pretty good job. Again, the, the nose is much bigger than the tail, but it's not wider. And so there's no taper here. So the tail isn't gonna sink like it would with a quiver fusion. But as far as an all mountain board goes, it's gonna hang in there with some of the best directional floaters in the all mountain category. And that's all you really want out of a board like this. When it comes to switch riding, this was very doable. Hey, it's no asymmetrical twin or true twin, but it's very good both directions. Definitely feels a little different, but so doable. And when it comes to park riding, I think the softer flex has some park appeal, but if the production model doesn't feel as soft, it feels more like the Quiver Fusion, then I just keep it to jumps and pipe, and that'll be pretty fun. I actually like this in the pipe. The few laps I took in it were pretty fun for some old man turns up the wall. Overall, I think this is a very good board. And if you are looking for something kind of like the Tahoe Labs Directional Twin, something that's all mountain, but looks and has a little bit more of that free ride look and feel to it, but you want more camber and more pop and more energy than a lot of those hybrid camber boards do with more rocker and less camber, then this could work for you. And I think it would be a really fun one board quiver. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average writer's perspective. There's no brand oversight and we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you wanna support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.